right, welcome everyone to our NS Ed Talk Salon B Session 1. I'm here with GIS Ambassador Craig McLaughlin, who is a representative from Esri Canada, and is going to take us through uh, an overview and a little lesson uh, exercise that you can do uh, in your classroom with ArcGIS Online. So thanks, Craig, for coming. Great. Thanks, Chris. Well, thanks everybody for having me. Again, my name is Craig McLaughlin. I am a GIS ambassador, uh, and I'm going to teach you about a technology called ArcGIS Online. Just share my screen. Okay. So we're going to talk about exploring uh, maps with ArcGIS Online, and the topics we're going to we're going to go through here. Uh, include what is why is location important. We're going to talk about what ArcGIS Online is, and go through a, an exercise that I've put together uh, for a classroom visit I'm going to do with my kids uh, around map-based inquiry. We're calling it a map scavenger hunt. And then what I'm going to do after I do that, I'm going to break down that lesson into how you actually can create that and use the tools and the, the platform to go and do that with your class. Uh, and then I have a quick discussion around delivery options, uh, you know, ideas I have, how I might implement that in the classroom. So why is location important? Well, location is uh, very important to us because it's something we deal with every day. Uh, it influences decisions we make, not only in ourselves, but our students as well. Um, it, it's, it influences how we get um, to and from work, uh, decisions we make around uh, what, what activities we're going to do, and in the real world, it, it, businesses and uh, NGOs and governments use spatial awareness and location to make decisions about operations. Uh, for the students, it's important to uh, teach the students to think about uh, the world that they live in, and also allows them to understand their role within the world. So what is it that they are doing and, and activities they do uh, relate to the geography around them? And that geography can be physical physical geography, like you know, landscapes, but also human geography, so people and places and, and uh, history. Um, spatial thinking is also, also important because it involves visualizing, interpreting, reasoning, so using your, your location as a, uh, to help determine where things are and why things are and it helps you uh, assess the change in space. And now these, these bullets, I uh, just point out, uh, came from uh, a paper from National Geographic around thinking about K to, K to 5. Uh, there's a link at the bottom, it's very useful. Uh, read. So real quickly, what is ArcGIS Online? Well, ArcGIS Online is a professional grade mapping platform, location platform. It's cloud-based, uh, used in higher education, it's used in uh, the industry, whether that's uh, municipal government, federal government, business, uh, all sorts of uh, industries around the world use uh, ArcGIS Online. Think of it as the Microsoft of uh, mapping. Uh, and the important thing here is it's available to every teacher and student in Nova Scotia. Um, we have an agreement, as we can, has come up with agreement with the province of Nova Scotia, uh, where everyone has access to it. And in fact, we have access to it, you have access to it, and the students have access to it through the um, page. Uh, so you can access that through the classroom section. You look for this icon here, it's ArcGIS um, the icon, and if for troubleshooting, I'm getting on onto it. I put Chris on the spot here and I reach, reach out to Chris and he can uh, help you get on there with your enterprise login. Just a little recap, here's, here it is uh, from the home page. Of course, your home page might be different from what you see here uh, based on your uh, what you have access to. Classroom section, you've got access to ArcGIS Online, and I've highlighted that. So real quickly, we're gonna we're gonna jump into this exercise, which is really the meat meat and potatoes of this uh, workshop. Um, we're gonna do a map-based inquiry. Uh, I'm calling it a map scavenger hunt for HRM, but that doesn't necessarily have to be HRM. It's whatever you are looking to explore, whether that's local, it could be, like I said, local, provincial, national. It could be around the world. Um, as long as you have uh, an idea of what you want to explore and what you want to, your, your students to examine um, around the planet, you can, you can use this, this pattern, this exercise to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to explore places and phenomenon uh, in, in Halifax with this exercise. Well, like I said, it could be around the world as well. We're going to increase the, the, the awareness of spatial relationships. So, you know, the size of things, the proximity of things, interpretation, which is really interesting because 
a lot of us are used to seeing things from the ground level, looking at the side view of it. When we take that and we can look at from an overhead view, which is what a map is really good at doing, things look a lot different. And it's, it's good to start building that understanding of, of interpreting and seeing what things look like from above the map. And then throughout that whole process, we're going to be learning a new technology. So enough about that, let's get to the actual technology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the actual application here. Uh, you're going to see on, you see on the screen here, this is a map interface. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go through the details of, uh, of the key pieces of how to pull this together after, but I want to show you kind of how I will walk through this exercise, not only for you, but with, with students when I go to my grade two and grade three class with my, uh, with my kids. Um, so what I've got here, I've got the map. This is an interactive map, so we can move it around. And I'm using a mouse here, but you can also use it with a, a trackpad, or I can even use the cursor arrows to move up and down. Um, I can zoom in and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to explore this. So when I start out with this exercise, I might say to my students, what, what are we looking at here? What, what, what do you see? Can you see where Canada is? And, and, and get them to try and see if they can point out you know, where are the provinces? What, what, what is this piece of land right here? Just really basic geo, geo inquiry of where we are in the world. And maybe have people, have the students come up and we, on, on, a, on the computer and actually point to Nova Scotia or pick out other places around the, uh, the country. And I can also validate that by changing what the, the background looks like. So right now we're looking at satellite imagery. I can go to this little widget here and I can change it. So I can go to Perhaps the National Geographic look and feel. I can see if we want to explore uh, with uh, world geography, I can use this as a very good one. It shows the country boundaries. So I can use this to help ask questions about where things are in Canada, where are we? But what I want to do is I'm going to, next I'm going to zoom in on Nova Scotia. So I'm going to click on this bookmark tab. And I'm going to zoom into Nova Scotia. Here we are in Nova Scotia. I'm going to go back to the base maps tab right here. Because the imagery really does show us well, and it's, it's really uh, powerful. So what I, what can I do here? I, I would ask my students, you know, how far do you think it is across the Bay of Fundy? What's the distance, you know, what's the distance between these two bodies of water? And they might make wild guess. And this is all about understanding the, the relative distance and, and the relationships between things. So some kid might say it's a kilometer or, you know, two kilometers or 10 feet. It doesn't really matter what the answer is. It's just a matter of trying to get them to think about distance. And then what I can do is I can use this tool and measure. And I can actually see how many kilometers it is from St. John, New Brunswick to Digby. Oh, it's 68 kilometers. So it's a very simple exercise to help educate people on, on distance um, and, and where, where things are. Because now we can start talking about, um, we've got Nova Scotia here, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island. If we want to drill into a little bit more detail, I'll click the bookmark tab again and I can zoom into Halifax. And here's a this 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 with this spot. I can there's a couple of questions I would ask. Um, what I'll say is first off is say to ask people what are these white things? You know, I might get a whole bunch of different answers. I might say some people might say it's snow on the ground, um, but the answer I would be looking for is clouds. So with this base, with the the imagery here, I can actually see the clouds and that were taken um, captured during the the satellite flyover. And then I'd ask a question. Well, how do you know it's clouds? We see if they get any answers. And one of the things I, I look for is there's shadows. You can see around here, there's shadows underneath the clouds. So you can see the perspective of the sun angle. And then you can talk about, well, why are the shadows on the on the, the north side of the of the cloud? Well, we can talk about, well, the sun sets, we're in the northern hemisphere, so the sun is closer to the equator. Just, you know, how, how do we fit within the world and you know where we are on the planet? Uh, we can also talk about, you know, uh, Halifax and, and identify different pieces of this 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 picture. Here's Bedford Basin right here. You know, here's the, the Narrows where the Halifax explosion happened, and we can just do a general awareness of where we are in the community. So I ask the students, where's Dartmouth? You know, and then I get them to point and click on the map, or they can circle it on the whiteboard if we're projecting onto a whiteboard or a smart board. We'll drill in a little bit more. So I, I'm gonna zoom into uh, another location around Halifax. I'll start asking about interpretation here and, and quantifying things. So we can 
say we're looking at a, a picture of the northwest arm and i could ask my students say okay look in this picture how many swimming pools do you see and then you can start having the conversation about you know uh, what would swimming pools look like and what do people see when they're at the side of a swimming pool what color is the water you know and and have people have the students start trying to figure that out so we can see here there's one this is the Wagwaltic clubs so there's one two three four pools there there's also looks like there's a couple pools over here but we can also I picked this location because we are going to ask students to, I'm, I'm tricking the students a little bit because I want to use the map tools to do some more investigation. So for sure we see four pools, maybe five, six, but let's use the tools to zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in and I can look at these blue things, which some students might say are pools, but if we actually look a little bit closer, what do we think they are? Well, they're, they're tennis courts. So at the WAG, there's some blue tennis courts. We can also see, try to start figuring out what else is around here at the WAG and in this view. Another question I could ask is, what other sports sports fields or sports infrastructure do I see here? Obviously, we've seen tennis courts. We see a baseball diamond. This is what a baseball diamond looks like from up above. Some people, we can zoom in here and look at the lines on this. It looks to me like it's a basketball court. There's a three-point line. So just getting that understanding of what you're looking at from up above and, and people students especially might find this interesting because you can see the detail of, you know of the lines on the on the pavement and what i like to do when i talk to the elementary school students specifically is say well that line that picture was taken from space and that just kind of gets people thinking in a whole different level you know they just their mind their mind explodes with that possibility you know other things we can do here is i can actually see well how how far is it from home plane to the field so how big is this field I use this measure tool. I need to move over a little bit. I can measure a linear distance and figure out. I click it. Figure out the distance from home plate to center field. It's 0.7 kilometers. 0.07 kilometers. Well, that doesn't help me too much. Let's change that to meters. 65, 65.1 meters. Right? Most baseball people talk in terms of feet because that's uh, what we do in baseball. So it's 213 feet. So again, just using the tools and using the map to, to explore and understand what's going on in the scene. Um, we also can use it, I go here, to ask really interesting questions about what people, a lot of people have been to, but might not understand what it is, what it looks like from above. My question to the students here would be, what are we looking at? And just let them think about it, and kind of figure this out. And in the exercise, the students are hands-on by themselves with their Chromebooks. I would ask them to zoom in and try and figure out what's going on. So if I zoom in here, you guys have probably figured out what this is, but maybe not. If I zoom in, you'll start to see some things that you recognize that will help you understand what, what this is. And I would point out to the students, look, there's planes. So we're at the, the Halifax airport. There's a couple things we can do here. We can look in and see baggage carts. It's kind of interesting to, to see how big and how long a plane is. So how, how long is this plane? 106 feet, go back to meters here. We can also uh, have the students measure the runway. Zoom back out and measure the different runway. It'd be interesting if we could see where the, uh, I think this is where that 747 land ended up right here. But we can measure the length of the, of the runways. Two, two and a half kilometers and we can compare the two. So we actually, in this at the airport, we've got two different lengths of runways. So we've got two and a half kilometers there. And I would have the students just maybe do a comparison. 3.1 meters, 3.1 kilometers. So this helps take the, what people are used to seeing from the ground and looking like, looking at it from above and understanding what's there. Next, what I would do is go over to another type of exercise where I can do a little bit of uh, interpretation as well. We've moved over, and this bookmark is called Cars and Their Carriers. This is Eastern Passage. Uh, I might, uh, I live in Dartmouth. My, my kids go to school in Dartmouth. I might say, well, does anyone understand, can anyone tell me what this is? And just leave it out there and, and see if they can decide. Um, but then I can zoom in. We zoom in here. We can start seeing that these features in the parking lot are actually cars. So this is the carport in Eastern Passage. And we can start seeing what different modes of transportation look like and, and vehicles look like from above. So we've got we've got cars, we've got the train siding right here, which is an interesting way of looking at trains because oftentimes we see the trains driving by on the track. We don't necessarily see how they get loaded or how they stack up against each other. And so we can see here that we've got a number of sidings that converge into one 
one track or one or two tracks here, which is something that uh, uh, helps to understand, the students understand the world around them and how things work. The other thing that we can do is we can ask a question about or show the students with this picture, you know, the boat that the, the cars came in on, this satellite frame. We're fortunate enough to have the actual boat that came in and we have the tugboats. So I could ask the students here um, whether the tugboats are, are on or not. And they, we, uh, I would hope that the answer would be yes, um, or I would help to educate them because you can see the churning waters here. So these tugboats are currently pushing that boat in and holding it against the, the breakwater here. Uh, another exercise that we can do in this area is we can, this is a bit rough, but we can help use the technology to calculate how many cars are in this section here. If I was to use the measure tool, and I would measure an area, and this is a bit rough, but you'll get the gist of it. Oops. And I measure the area of a car. Oops, square kilometers, two square meters. So 11 square meters. What I can do is then I can interpol interpolate that by actually doing another measurement for this block of cars. And I can do the math. Of course, my drawing is not. I can do the math and divide that by 11 square meters to get a rough estimate for the number of cars. So just another way of using the tools to help, um, you know, in a lesson of, with math and, and figuring out how you can use these tools to, to understand and do some analysis. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to another scene. And here, there's a couple things I would do here. This is Halifax. I would, I would ask the students to count how many bridges are here. Just find me the bridges. And you know, the reason for doing that is you start to understand that from up above, water is dark. So we need to find all the places where there's, there's uh, bridges crossing the dark water. So obviously, there's one here, one here, and there's one here. And I might ask if my kids are from Dharma, so they know this area, I might ask them, what, what to name the bridges or to at least start to get a sense for where they are. Um, you know, and for those of us in Halifax here, you know, the new bridge, the old the new bridge, the old bridge, the McDonald's and the K, um, to start to get that awareness. But we can also measure, use the tools to measure, uh, maybe ask the students to see which bridge is longer. And you can do a quick little measure, 680 meters there. Oops. Pretty close, 640. 30, 39 there, 33 there. So quite close. We can also zoom in and take a look at the bridges. You can start to see the perspective in some cases. You can see the towers here. So just a matter of, you know, show that there's some elevation and shadows. And you can use the scene to, to look for boats in the water. Um, you can count, this is the Irving shipyard and the, the military base down here. So you can look at the different Navy, Navy frigates. Just another way of looking at the world. And then what I would do is I would come here. So this is something that we drive by in Dartmouth quite a bit, but this I would ask the students, what's this? And to see what they come up with. I would you know, give them, maybe give them some hints if they can't quite figure it out. Say this is a sporting, uh, you know, sporting field of sorts and kind of point out little de de details. But this is obviously for us, it's a golf course. But for people who haven't, aren't used to seeing things from up above, they might not understand that that's what a golf course looks like. Um, and we could do this around the province, clearly, because some golf courses are contained like this, um, and some golf, golf courses are the links type, which are long, you know, long and narrow. But you could also, you know, have the students try and figure out the total, the total length of the, of the golf course, and maybe compare that with what's actually posted on the website to see if how accurate you are. You know, how does your, how does your overhead measuring measure up? Or you could also just measure the total the total area of this golf course. If I can get it, click, and you can do irregular. There we go. Irregular measure. Oh, that's showing me the number. You can measure the area. So we can also go and just do shape recognition. I did a module with my kids a year or so ago about shapes around the world. And using a map is a really interesting way of looking at shapes. So with this bookmark, I would ask, well, I'm gonna ask my students, what shapes do you see here? And just free for all and get them to list it out, shout it out, we can write it on a whiteboard. Um, this is obviously downtown Halifax. We've got a star here, we've got the oval, we've got some 
some really nice circles here with the traffic circle. We've got some rectangles, and we can start talking about what they actually are. So we see the we see the shapes, and we can talk about what those shapes actually mean, what they are in the real world. Um, and this can be done anywhere. I did it with the, the pyramids uh, in Egypt to, to talk about a pyramid with Epcot Center to look at spheres. There's all sorts of geometries and beautiful buildings and things that you can look at and uh, try and, and uh, find and create, create scenes that people can try and interpret. So that's, that's the basics of my exercise. Um, I would be doing this with grade twos and threes. Um, the way I would uh, interact with them, I'm going to do with facilitated walkthrough and potentially have them do it on their on the Chromebooks. Um, uh, if they're able to do it and they have the access to the technology, which they do. So now what I want to do is I want to switch back and I'm going to show you how to do this. How do you, how do you make a bookmark and how do you interact with this? For that, I'm just going to go to a brand new map. So ArcGIS Online. When you, let me backtrack, when you log into your GNASPES site and you click ArcGIS Online, and once you've got your login, you're going to end up at this page. So what we want to do is I want to get you to go to the map. This map button right up here, the map button. Now bring you to a new map, and it'll zoom you into Canada. I believe that's where it's at. Zoom you into Canada. What I want to do is I want to get a little bit more real estate, so I'm going to click this button to get rid of that pane. It gives me a bit more real estate to work with. I'm just going to position my map. Now, I went over really quickly before the, the exercise, but you can choose which base maps you want for whatever you're doing. If you want to look at the imagery, you can select the imagery. There's also imagery with labels, so you can see the countries. Again, another way to, to to investigate and explore the world where you can see the imagery and, and have some labels. Um, there's a number of base maps. I encourage you to explore them. I'm not going to go through them, through them all, but um, some of them are imagery and some of them are, uh, I'll show you a topographic one, one where it's got streets and more of a, a map you're used to seeing. Um, you can choose whichever, you, whichever you'd like. So next, what I want to show you is the measure tool. I, I, I kind of illustrated that in the exercise. But all you need to do if you're teaching your students is to click this button. There's an area that draws an area. You click on the map, click again, you keep clicking until you are done your measurement, and then you double click. And that gives you your results. Similar with, with the line measure, click once to start it. You can click, uh, and every click it's going to add a point, and you can, it'll do the linear distance along that arc. And double click to, to, to stop. And if at any time you want to to uh, close it out, you can just close the close the uh, the tool. And one last one here for it is the x y the coordinate measurement. So you can actually see as you move around, you see the latitude and longitude. So if you ever ever were doing uh, some kind of uh, exploration based on learning longitude and latitude or degrees minutes seconds, you can actually use this map. You can give students a, a set of coordinates for some interesting feature. And have them use this tool to try and navigate the world to figure out where things are on the map. So, for example, here's a, the big crater in Quebec, um, which is another example of a good feature you could look at if you want to study a ring um, for shapes. But you could actually put the put it, give them an X Y in the middle, and you could have them search for that X Y. And you could change it to degrees, minutes, and seconds as well. And you click on the map, and it tells you what it is. Um, another interesting and useful thing, uh, feature of this map, which I haven't shown you yet, is the search bar. Now, this will actually search for features, addresses, place names, and points of interest within the map. This is stored by, this is, this is built into the platform. Uh, I can type in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, and it will fill auto fill in. You'll see here, okay, it even has the airport, and it will zoom me into that location. I'm going to change my base. There's the airport. So you can use this if you have points of interest or things you want, addresses you want to search and you want to use to build your adventure, your your lesson. You use this this tool to search. So for example, addresses Bedford Highway, Bedford. So it refills it and it will zoom you in to that location. This is our office. So once you have that, once you have your location, we want to create a bookmark. So a bookmark is very easy to create. You just click on it, and 
you say add bookmark. And what it's going to do is it's going to save the envelope of where the, the actual, what you see on the screen to uh, a, fa a favorite spot or a bookmark. And all I have to do is add text. I can say Esri Canada Office. And I just hit enter. And that's it. So now if I zoom away from that area, I pan and zoom away. When I click on that again, it's going to automatically zoom me to it. So for you, all you need to do is come up with a series of spots on the planet in your community, in the country, in the province, around the world that you want to explore for whatever the purpose that you want to explore, whether that's ancient history, you know, find the location of the seven ancient wonders of the world. Where are those on the, on the earth? Um, you find those locations, you create a bookmark, and then what you can do is you can have people zoom to those locations and maybe ask a question about, you know, what does it look like right now, you know? Great pyramids of Giza are in the middle of a desert. When you zoom out, you see that Cairo is all pretty much all the way around it. Um, so all you need to do is do that to create bookmarks. You just find your location, zoom to it. Oh, this is Burnside. Add a bookmark. Burnside Park. Hit enter and it's done. I close that, and when I open it up again, there's Burnside. Okay. Um, one item of note. Uh, around bookmarks is you need to save them. So I need to save them in the map document. So right now I've got them in this map, but if I want to, if I'm doing this for an exercise, I'm pre-building this exercise and I want to come back and I want to access that, I need to save this map. So I just, it's quite simple, I hit save, save the map. I need to put a title in it. So it's Craig's Dartmouth. want to do something that's meaningful to you into your exercise, put some tags in it, perhaps your class name or the subject you're looking at, or the location, Dartmouth. And tags are used to search. So if you wanted to search for this content, you could find it using the tags. Summary, uh, I'll call it a geo inquiry map. And it's going to be saved in the file. That's it. I've saved it. So now you're going to, now the next question is, okay, Find that, what do I, where do I find it? What I do is I click on this home button up here and I hit content. So if you were to log out and log back in, you will go to your content and here's the map I just created right here. Can you navigate to that from the home page for us? So we yeah. see what it looks like on the Absolutely. Computer. So when I go back and I log in, the question the question was case from here was can we log to, can we log find that from the home page when we first log in. So when you log in from Gene's Pads, you're going to come to this page. All you need to do is go to content, which is up here. Hit content and it'll open up your folder and there's my map. And to open that map, I click on it. It's going to bring me to a, a, a landing page for that that content and I can hit open in map. One thing to note is that when you save your map, that is the, that's the, what you see in your map area when you hit save is what's going to come up every time you open that map. So if I was to zoom, and that's called your home extent, home, home location. So if I was to zoom around and I hit home, it's going to come back to here. So if you are doing an activity that you want people to zoom around to, uh, perhaps you want to set the home location if you're going, you know, doing something in Nova Scotia. We want to explore Nova Scotia to start with. I hit save my map. Again, this is what's going to come up when I open that map. So now if I zoom around, I'm going to zoom in real quick, in the middle of the province. If I hit home again, it's going to come back to Nova Scotia. Easily, you know, easily fixed if you, if you access Maybe somewhere else and you want to have the, the extent show up uh, at a different place, just zoom out at your default extent, zoom out to that spot and hit save. Um, one last little thing that's kind of useful as you're zooming around is up in this top left corner is a little tiny arrow, and that is an overview map, which will show you where you are in the world. So as you're zooming into your bookmarks, Burnside Park, you will see the overview map changes as well. Which is kind of interesting. What the, the the value for that for a student is as you're zooming into a detailed location, you have some context so they can see where that is in relation to the rest of the. 
with that, you've got the tools to create a little uh, map adventure geo inquiries activity for your students. Um, I'm going to switch back real quick to my PowerPoint and just talk about one more thing. Just delivery options. The ideas I've had, and I'm still trying to figure this out with my teachers when I go into my students' class, but there's a couple of ways I see you can do this depending on the level and the, 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 what you feel you're, you're comfortable with doing and what your students might be comfortable with doing. Is that you could create um, the map that we just did. I just showed you. You create it yourself with some bookmarks and you come up with a series of questions on a handout that you give to people and they do it self-paced, whether that's with their Chromebooks or at home because they have access to this. all this needs as a web browser. So if, uh, if that's something that uh, works for your class or is something you want to do, they could do that. Um, the other way that you could do it is via facilitated discussion. And that's I, what I'm probably going to do with my two, grade two class is project, try and project it onto a whiteboard, have a stack of whiteboard markers and have students come up and mark the map. So I'll ask some questions, have them come up and circle, you know, where's Halifax, you know, ask some questions and get them to have fun writing right on the projected image on the whiteboard. So then we can wipe it off and move to the next scene just to make it fun and interactive and kind of share things around. Um, but there's, there's really, you know, however you feel you want to use, use that, that tool, you can, but uh, those are some ideas that I had. And for teachers using Google Classroom or Moodle, we can deliver the map with a URL uh, via Classroom or Moodle or iframe embed code and embed it directly into, into your LMS. So um, if you're using either of those tools, you can directly uh, have students access them from your, your class space. Yeah. Perfect. So hopefully that was helpful for you. That's that's all I've got right now. The last thing I want to do is say happy GIS Day because today is the, uh, the GIS Day around the world, and uh, we look forward to doing more GIS mappy things with the uh, Department of Education uh, over the next number of years. All right. all right. Thanks, Craig, for joining us today, and thanks for you for watching. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. -bye. Stop.